Tobacco farming in North Carolina is big business. It's a $7 billion industry that creates around 255,000 jobs statewide and accounts for a major portion of North Carolina's income. During tobacco season in eastern North Carolina, if you are here, you will see large pickers in the field and trailers full of tobacco up and down the roads. That is because North Carolina is the nation's top producer of tobacco, with the bulk of the fields and farms being in eastern North Carolina. There are around 1,600 tobacco farms throughout the state, and in 2013, North Carolina produced around 183,000 acres of tobacco, or 154,000 tons of tobacco leaves. Exporting for this cash crop in North Carolina alone was around $766 million last year. Throughout the duration of this video, we will be exploring Morris Farms in Coleraine, North Carolina, and explaining the modern farming practices used today versus how it was done in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. We will show you the entire process from start to finish, starting with picking the tobacco and ending with a 750 pound bale of tobacco ready to be shipped to market. Jim Morris, the owner of Morris Farms, is a second generation farmer who is passing his knowledge of farming on to his two sons, Zach and Nick. As you will see in the video, Morris Farms is a major farming operation employing around 75 people and producing around 21 tons of tobacco per day. What you have been viewing in the video so far is the process in which the tobacco pickers remove the leaves from the stalk and place it onto a trailer where it is sent to a warehouse to be cured, sorted, and packaged. This is much different than the scene would have been 50 years ago. When Jim's father was farming, you would have seen around 10 workers in the field pulling tobacco by hand. Before you could pull this tobacco by hand, it would have to be seeded and grown in a seed bed, which was then transferred into the field. Also today, farmers use pesticides and herbicides to control bugs, worms, and other plants from harming the tobacco and growing in the fields. Before these chemicals, the workers would actually have to walk out into the field and examine each plant before removing any worms or grass by hand. They would also remove the suckers or flower blooms from the plant, which would allow the nutrients to go directly to the leaves. They would then come back to the plant over the next couple of weeks and remove the lower leaves, also referred to as the lugs. These were often the cl lower quality leaves. They would then return to the field multiple times and remove the remaining leaves in a process that takes approximately six to seven weeks to complete. Once they removed the leaves from the field, the labor intensive process wasn't over. Once the leaves returned to the barn, the leaves were wrapped on a stick, often by the women or wives of the farmers. When the farmers returned from picking the tobacco, they would hang these in the barns where heat was applied to cure the tobacco, which would give it its bright yellow color. This process took around seven days to cure. The furnace in the barn was then shut off and the doors were opened to naturally humidify the leaves and make the leaves pliable once again. This process today is done with computerized barns as you will see in the video. The final step of this process involves removing the leaves from the barn and sending it to market to be sold. Enjoy the video as Jim Morris of Morris Farms explains the modern day process as he walks you through his day-to-day -day operation as a tobacco farmer in eastern North Carolina.
Today we're here with Morris Farms. This is Jim Morris. He's the owner of Morris Farms. And we're talking about tobacco. This is a bulk horn. Uh, this is Morris put in today. It's green tobacco. And how many boxes does it hold? Oh, Ten boxes. Ten boxes. Is that uh, equal to how many pounds of, of cured tobacco? It varies. Lower stock tobacco is lighter. It'll probably be about 3,000 pounds of cured leaf of lighter, lower stock tobacco, but up stock tobacco, it can be as much as 5,000 pounds. Okay. It weighs heavier as you get up the stalk. Big difference. Yeah. Yeah. So, how many days do you take to cure this tobacco out? It takes about 10 days to rotate these barns around. Completely 10 days. We're yellow, we're yellow on this and we'll low heat at 90 degrees the first day. It will inch up to about 105 degrees, about two and a half days, and then we'll give it fresh air, and give it, turn the heat up higher, and it'll, it'll set the color at a yellow, a yellow color. That's what we want. We want the tobacco to yellow up before we put the high heat to it. Uh -huh. And then after getting the desired color, we, we put the high heat to it and it dries it out of that color. And uh, that's what you want, your desirable color is yellow. This is cured out tobacco right yeah, here. Very same style of tobacco, you cure it in the green. This is what it looks like when it yellows up. You dry it out, as you notice, Cured is completely dry. Oh yeah, Woo. completely dry. We had to add moisture back to it, even it so it's pliable to, to handle. In the old days, you call that getting in order. That's right. You still right. call it getting in order? Yeah. This is a bar just like it, but we added moisture back to it so we can handle. It. You know how soft, soft, soft and pliable, pliable it is. Woo. I wish that camera could smell because it smells really good when it's cured out. It really is. How many bars do you have, Jim? Seven. Seven? Woo! Man, they get all seven running at the same time? Yeah. Or? It's our pure control. It does our pure and automatic. We get a stand and a thermal stand uh -huh. simultaneously. So we control our temperature and moisture in the bar. Way. We put in, in, in the daytime, 
starting like 7, 8 o'clock, but early in the morning we take out. But now you're taking out all day long. Yeah. You're bailing all day bailing long. All looking for when you're, in, you're looking area. for anything anything that's got any black or anything that's any uh, green stems any yeah. green stems anything that hasn't been cured out all the way right i think weeds like like yeah to get in and pick those yeah, out you, you pick out the grass and you pick out your suckers which is yeah. like that that's a, right because your weeds not, don't weeds don't stay green but yeah yeah they don't cure out uh -huh. Right. How much does that knock you, does that knock you a lot if you got a lot of crab? Uh, yeah, it'll, it depends on how much crab you have. Uh -huh. If you've got a lot, it'll, it'll knock you some, but uh, if you clean it out, there's no problem. A lot of hand labor involved here. 